In this video, I'm going to show you how to feel coordination without looking at the ball, without looking at the slab, without any of that fancy stuff. How do you feel? Like good old fashioned, old school, see to your pants flying, how do you feel coordination? That's what we're working on on this episode of The Finer Points. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On The Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. I'm Jason Miller from LearnTheFinerPoints.com. Welcome back to the show. Um, I'm up here flying solo. Normally, I have you guys as like a little, you know, friend on my shoulder while I'm giving real flight lessons to real students. Um, but today, I'm just talking to you, which is pretty unusual. But the San Carlos Flight Center is not doing dual instruction yet. So lucky us, we get to hang out here together. I'm going to show you how to feel coordination. Um, in an airplane without looking at the ball, without looking at anything, just good old fashioned, old school, seat of your pants flying. Okay, it's really important that you fly in a coordinated way. Um, an airplane that's coordinated is an airplane that has both wings seeing the same amount of oncoming wind, right? Getting the same amount of airflow. Um, it's important for your safety because if you were to get, you know, too slow and inadvertently stall, if you were uncoordinated, the wing that gets less airflow stalls first and that's how stall spin accidents happen. Um, but it's also important for your, you know, sort of uh, efficiency. If you're, you know, cruising along in an uncoordinated way, you're, you're flying kind of sideways here. The, the side of the fuselage is exposed to the oncoming wind and you're, you know, you're not going as fast as you could. Um, and it's also, you know, sloppy for your passengers if you're not using rudders properly. So um, not just to be a safe pilot, but also to be a smooth and efficient pilot, it's important that you're flying in a coordinated way. So let's learn how that works. All right, here we are, 4,500. I'm going to level off. Let the airplane accelerate a little bit. Power back to a cruise speed. A mixture and go through my flow check. We've got 250, 250 pressure, temperature, vacuum, amps, lights, power, and fuel are all set properly. So cruise checklist, throttle, mixture, flight instruments, engine gauges, heading indicator, checklist complete. I want to talk to you guys for a minute about what it means to uh, be coordinated and how to know if you're coordinated just by feel. Um, now I'm not talking about right rudder when you add power for a go around or right rudder in a climb. You guys know what I think about that. That's where you're using your Lindbergh reference. But I mean like, you know, how much rudder do I need when I apply aileron? So um, here's what I want you to try next time you go flying. First of all, Slow the airplane way down, um, and I'm going to do some clearing turns here while I do that. So I lift the wing, I look left, and I turn 90 degrees left while I'm talking to you and looking outside. Very shallow turn for the clearing turn because I don't want uh, too much workload. I just want to be able to look around, use all the windows, and make sure no one's around me. I've got four flight with my sentry. I do not see any ADS-B targets. Um, good. All right, so... The reason I'm having you slow down is because in a plane like a Cessna or a Piper or any of these modern airplanes, it's really hard to feel what I'm about to tell you. So you want to use very large aileron inputs. And remember, the airplane's aerodynamic, right? So if you want to bank it and you're going slower, you need a larger aileron deflection than you would if you were going faster, right? More airflow, less deflection. Less airflow, more deflection. Okay. So I get slow. It doesn't matter how slow. We're just demonstrating this, but I'm here at 70 knots, okay? So I'll just hold 70. Uh, 4,500, it's about 65, 70 knots. Uh, my nose, by the way, just got so high that I can't see forward anymore, so I am actually letting my eyes follow the horizon. I'm in the right seat, so my eyes come sort of down to the right, and I use this little corner area here that I call the Lindbergh reference, all right? So that's what I'm going to use. Um, and for now, because I'm going slow, I'm just holding a little right rudder. I'm in trim but I'm able to fly straight just holding right rudder. Now here's what I want you to feel. Imagine there's somebody with their hands under your seat. Um, so you've got right hand on your right side and left hand on your left side. Now, I just want you to feel it first because if you can't feel it, then you don't know, or if you haven't felt it, then you don't know what you're trying to fix, right? So you're just gonna take your feet off the rudders, okay? Pretending that you don't know they exist. You don't know what they're for. 
what are those pedals? All right, anyway, so you're going to use really large aileron inputs just to whatever extent you feel comfortable. I'm about 70 knots. I'm going to go hard right, hard left. Look at that, right? And the nose is going opposite the direction I'm rolling. So when I roll right, the nose goes left. When I roll left, the nose goes right. Now feel that in your seat. If you're imagining there's a right hand on your right side and a left hand on your left side, you will feel pressure on the side you need. So when I roll right, I need right pressure. When I roll left, I feel it on my left side. When I roll right, I feel it on my right side. Okay, that's step one. Step two, the next thing I want you to notice is the feeling of pressure on your seat comes just a second or two after the roll. All right, so the aileron makes the lift, the wing starts lifting, and then there's a little bit of drag. Don't wait too long, I'm talking fractions of seconds here, but it is slightly after the roll. So feel that first, so hard right, there's pressure, hard left, there's pressure. Hard right, there's pressure. Hard left, there's pressure, okay? Now your job is to try to fix that. Bring your feet up onto the pedals, Notice that the balls of my feet are on the bottoms of the pedals so that I'm able to push with the flow of my ankle, right? So I can push it, not with my entire leg, but just with my, with my ankle, or I could push with my leg, but bottom line is the ball of my foot, I don't know if you can see that. Let me take up another shot for you. Yeah, the, the, my toes are on the bottom of the pedal. All right, so now you're going to use those same fast roll rates at this same slow speed, only you're going to try to fix it by adding in some rudder. There, that felt a little better. That felt a little better. Now, if you use too much rudder, you'll feel the same thing on the opposite side. For example, if I roll left and use too much left rudder, I'll feel pressure on my right side. So what you're trying to learn here is seat of your pants flying skills. When I roll hard right, then I use, that was it right there. Roll left, that's it, right there. So experiment, because the harder you roll, the faster you roll, the more pressure on the rudder you're going to need. If I, if I simply just roll super slow like this, barely putting any aileron on, there I'm rolling, I don't need any rudder at all, really. I mean, there's just not enough adverse aileron you ought to need to counteract anything. So in order to feel what coordination feels like in the seat of your pants, you have to use pretty large aileron deflections in an airplane like this. Anyway, next time you're out flying, try that little what I call coordination exercise. Um, and I think it will pay dividends for you and go a long way toward making you a safer pilot. All right, you guys, so that's the way you feel coordination. And coordination is something all pilots struggle with. We've struggled with it since we started flying. That's why loss of control is still one of the major categories of fatal accidents. Um, but just remember, if you're adding power, it's your power and your right foot at the same time. If you're in slow flight or a climb, you use the Lindbergh reference. There's a video on that. And uh, if you're thinking about how much rudder do I need rolling into or out of a bank, do the coordination exercise that I just showed you and you'll be way ahead of the game. So a huge thanks to the sponsors for their support of this show. Um, AOPA Pilot Protection Services. Make sure that when you renew your AOPA membership, you add Pilot Protection Services. That'll be huge if you ever need it. Also, come to LearnTheFinerPoints.com. Make sure you get your free gift video. And we've expanded the free trial of Ground School to three days. You can now get a full three-day trial of, of our Ground School app, private pilot knowledge app called Ground School. Huge thanks to you, the best fans on the internet, for watching this video. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share with your friends. And until next time, be safe and fly your best.